Hey there YouTube, Far North Racing here. So I had footage shot that shows the lathe that we were going to convert to CNC, but unfortunately I recorded that video inside my garage instead of the shop. And the garage is a giant open space with a big steel door at one end. And it turns out that when you record audio in a room like that, what you get is all this reverb that sounds like I'm recording in the bottom of a giant steel can. So all that footage is completely unusable and now I have to overdub the audio on top of it. So the audio seems a little weird, that's why. So, what we have here is a Wabeco D2000 bar bed lathe. Wabeco is a German company. It's been around since the 1880s. And somewhere around the beginning of the 1970s, they started making machine tools. And this is one of the ones that they, they first started making. This is a 1978 model, serial number like 976. So it's one of the first ones they ever made. It's also super, super, super basic. Most of the features that you would normally expect to find on an engine lathe aren't here. This lathe has a chuck, it's got a tailstock, it's got a carriage with a cross slide and a compound slide, and that's it. No power feed, no screw cutting, no half nuts, no, none of the stuff that you normally find even on a basic Chinese lathe exists on this. It's really well made for what it is. There's that sort of German craftsmanship attention to quality on it. It's feature poor, but quality rich. That feature poorness makes it a bad candidate for use as a manual lathe, but the quality control on it and the fact that everything seems to work fairly smoothly makes it a natural candidate for conversion to CNC because there's no other crap in the way to get in the way of the conversion. And it was free, so you can't argue with price. As you can see, you have the traditional headstock on one end, then you have a pair of ground steel bars over which the carriage slides. The tailstock is permanently attached and at the far end is a cap with the handle for the lead screw. Their lead screw runs down the center of these two ground steel ways. That's going to make it easy for us to convert the z-axis to CNC because the stepper motor will bolt on the end. Let's have a closer look at some of the other features of this lathe. So here you can see the carriage travel end, the handle that controls the lead screw. As you turn this handle, you move the carriage back and forth. And if you look carefully, you'll notice that it's very badly bent. Someone has given it a whack, and now it is no longer round. This is going to give us an opportunity to replace it with a ball screw, I think. The motion of the carriage itself, though, as we turn this handle to move the carriage back and forth, it's very smooth. So that gives me hope that the CNC conversion is going to work all right. Note that the shaft is held in place with just a pinned on collar and a grease fitting. There's no bearing in there and there's a fair amount of slop in that and there's no way to take it out because there's no threaded fastener to tighten it. Note as well that the way the handle is held on the end of the shaft isn't with a threaded fastener but instead with these roll pins that are spiked in place. Uh, this whole lathe is put together that way. There's almost no fasteners in it. It's all put together with pins like a firearm. The way the compound slide here is attached is not at all in the usual sort of standard. Normally what you have is a T-slot cut in here for your tool post to sit on, and sometimes you have a T-slot here on the uh, cross slide that the, that the compound fits on as well. Uh, instead what they've done is there's this hole that's been bored in here. And on this side here, there's a little grub screw that pushes on a wedge-shaped spacer and on the underside of the compound rest there's this pulley looking thing that fits in there and it's actually got a groove in it it's like a pulley so when you tighten the grub screw it forces that into that notch and locks it solid it's an elegant system honestly you get this nice very smooth action in there it's a very nice smooth rotation action you twist that screw and it locks in place but it means that you can't use any of the aftermarket tooling uh, that's out there sort of generally that fits you know, the, these sort of Atlas, Craftsman, South Bend standard. Uh, so you gotta, you got to figure out a new way to do it. What I'm going to wind up doing is machining a spacer to fit in here that clamps that down. And then there'll be another spacer that sits on top of this and a standard wedge style quick change tool post will fit on here. I don't need the compound anymore, but what I do need is a way to make sure that every tool that goes in there has the same length every time because I don't want to be resetting the length of the tool every time I have to change tools for a CNC program. Uh, minor thing, but uh, fairly straightforward to make happen. 
So here we see the end of the lead screw. And you'll notice this giant gap between here and here, not supported on the other end. Later versions of this model, actually the shaft goes all the way into this housing and it's driven on the other side. There's change gears and you can use this as a power feed. But this early model, it's just floating in the air. So when I convert this to a ball screw, I'm going to want to support this end. Rather than try and drill into this housing and support it on the other side, because I'm going to drive the other end with the stepper motor, all I need over here is a, is a basic bearing block. So what I can do is create a dog bone looking thing that slides over these rails and just fits between here and here and has a pickup in here for the bearing that supports that. So here's a look in the motor housing and the headstock. It's full of what appears to be sawdust. I believe whoever had this before me was attempting to machine wood with it. So, okay. Uh, it looks like we've got a basic uh, standardized pattern here for holding the motor. I think that's uh, one of the NEMA mounts, but that, that'll be good because all I have to do is find a motor that fits that or adapt my treadmill motor to fit that. So that'll be a fairly straightforward thing. We've got a pulley on here for driving the, uh, the headstock. It's got some sort of tooth dealy here, which I believe is what was normally used to drive the power feed on later models. This shaft, which is right now only being used to hold this open, and you see there's a boss here with leaf screw normally come through on versions that have chain wheels. So I believe the way this worked is there was a tooth belt that came off of here, there's an idler on here, it hooked up to this, and there's some stuff going on in there to be able to drive that, but I don't have to worry about that. Uh, all I need to do is just change out this pulley, change out this pulley, and there's tons of room in there for me to get an encoder so I can synchronize the spindle to the drive. So that's a quick overview of all the major features of this lathe. Not much there, but that's a bonus when you're trying to do a CNC conversion. Uh, next up, we'll be doing some videos on the conversion process itself. So, thanks for watching. Let me grab my beater. Oh, <laughs>